Good morning, good morning, good morning. Going in a different way today. There are two ways. There's the slow way and the slightly slower way. So this is the slow way. Let's turn the fan off, give it a chance. Give it a chance to hear what I'm saying. I still haven't got that Lavalier mate sorted out. Oh dear, what a laugh. That's right. It's a perfectly good place to park right, pass right here. But why not edge past it? Let me just uh, put my wing, my, uh, wing mirror in. It's hard to save £30 a day. Put your wing mirror in on narrow roads. So how are you? All right? We meet again. Who'd have thought when I started doing all these videos that I would do so many? I've done some. <coughs> Excuse me. I've done some multiple of a hundred. Which is a, which is a bit of a stupid thing to say really because every number is a multiple of a hundred, isn't it? You know, even minus five is a multiple of a hundred. Just depends on uh, what you multiply it by. Ha ha ha! Little math joke there. Now, angry, you might say. What is the point, other than using up server space on YouTube? What is the point of doing a ton of YouTube videos that nobody watches? Well. That's a good question, actually. No, no, there is a reason. First of all, it's a social commentary. And there was a, a British scientist called David Kelly, I think, who was uh, advising the government on whether or not the Iraqi government had nuclear weapons. And the government didn't like his advice. Now, I'm not generally a conspiracy theorist. I believe that the Earth is a ball. We went to the moon. That blowing up the Twin Towers was a master stroke of strategy. And exploited uh, the weak security surrounding airline pilot training. And uh, so, you know, I don't, I don't make claims lightly. But at the time that David Kelly died, it was completely out of character and really a weird thing. And it's entirely possible that he just decided to one day to randomly take himself in the woods and kill himself. But at the time, I, I could make up quite a good and quite a reasonable narrative as to why and how and why at that point he, he, had, had to, he needed to disappear. And... Um, you know, he follows a proud tradition of people who have unexpectedly disappeared, uh, like uh, Fred West, the mass murderer of young women who hung himself, Harold Shipman, the mass murderer, uh, I think again, hung himself. You know, and all these people, they hang themselves in, in custody. At, when they're not allowed to uh, have any shoelaces or any belts or anything, you know. All they've got is their sweatsuit and their pants and socks, and yet they hang themselves. And you've got uh, the latest one is that American guy, uh, billionaire, had a, owned a party island. I forget what his name is, it'll come to me anyway. But again, you know in custody, in a cell, supposed to be under constant surveillance, uh, supposed to be under suicide watch, not supposed to have anything that he can hang himself with, and then uh, hangs himself. So, and it's not just people, I mean, you know, again, the uh, nuclear submarine conqueror, uh, on patrol in the Falklands. We're at war with the Argentinians over the Falklands. Uh, 
Uh, along comes an Argentinian, uh, an Argentinian aircraft carrier. Um, which, which we accept at the time was steaming away from the Falklands, but the argument was made um, that it was in the area and that it would have only taken it like half an hour to turn around. And so, and it was a target of opportunity. And the bloke who's <laughs> in charge of the Conqueror spent his entire life working on solutions to sink ships. And all of a sudden he's in an active war zone and he comes across a big fat ship <laughs> and he just can't <coughs> he just cannot keep his finger off the trigger right but the point is that uh, very soon afterwards it becomes apparent that the logbook which should describe in detail the events of that day I mean not just a weather report they just like woke up 8 o'clock joints fell a bit stiff uh, you know, bright and sunny day, that which is like probably 99.999% of the logbook entries on the Gongra. But no, you know, met an enemy aircraft carrier, decided to sink it, all of a sudden that logbook's not there anymore, it's gone missing, you know. <coughs> I mean, certain things do go missing, don't they, you know? You put a Cornish pasty in the fridge and then uh, one day you open the door and it's not there anymore uh, especially if you live in student accommodation and or in my case you realise that you, you have yourself eaten it the day before um, a Cornish pasty goes missing don't they you know your some uh, memory chip with some data on it goes missing the logbook of a nuclear submarine does not go missing <laughs> it hasn't fallen down the back of the captain's settee in the ward room you know it's it's been li deliberately lost because uh, it uh, they don't want it in the public domain so and this is not a conspiracy theory this is fact you can go and check this you, you just google Con the conqueror logbook fiasco or something you'll, you'll find this out so to get back to the, the my subject of why I'm doing these videos and David Kelly at the time uh, David Kelly uh, died as I say I had quite a coherent idea about what was going on and um, and I explained it to my mother she said to me it was you know terrible about that David Kelly that poor David Kelly killing himself and I said, no, that, you know, there's a whole long chain of events that led up to that being inevitable. And I, and I was able to explain it to her. But the trouble is, it's like this uh, bloody um, chi-squared statistical test that I worked out once and then I've never been able to. It, it's, you have like an, a, a flash, you know, you have an insight, you have a blinding moment of clarity. And all of a sudden you understand your model of that part of how the world works is um, uh, all of a sudden it makes sense and then but it's very complicated and it relies on nuance and a lot of deep thought and so what happens is you um go on 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 and you you know you might not go get that again and the problem is that you're you're no longer in context you know it's all very well saying, oh, well, you know, to find out what happened, let's say, in the Second World War, all you have to do is go back and uh, read the newspapers, for example, um, of the time, and you can get back into the, into the period, and you can start to understand why things happened as they did. And I'm sure that's true. I'm sure you do get a better understanding of, uh, and a deeper insight, and possibly unlock some secrets of uh, events at the time but I don't think you're going to be much better analyzing the events of the you know the zeitgeist than someone who was actually alive at the time you know because there's a lot of nuance as I say there's a lot of subtle signals there's stuff that doesn't go in the papers there's stuff that people just know because everybody who was alive at that time knows it and so that's the first reason is that 
by laying this down and talking about uh, living conditions and working conditions and economic conditions and stuff like this uh, in a contemporaneous fashion then what I can do is I can sort of um, lay down a record of exactly what was going on at the time from the point of view of someone that was taking notice you know not someone that was just literally like a signal repeater who just reads or hears the news and just goes around telling everybody that what the news is you know I tend to try and go one or preferably two levels deeper than that because that's where you find the the levers you know that's why the levers that uh, the, the levers that that sort of make things work don't lie on the surface they're not superficial so um, the second reason is that uh, it's easy you know I'm driving to work I'm not doing anything else so I might as well chat to you as, as anyone uh, and you know uh, talking to people helps you think uh, <clears throat> you know it's recommended as a therapy for anyone who's about to have a nervous breakdown so perhaps it's uh, helped me uh, <laughs> helps my mental health I'm sure that's true and then uh, you know but also um, it does serve as a record for me in other words although it's not possible at the moment we're on the verge at the moment of being able to um, get any, some sort of decent uh, transcription and analysis of speech um, I am 100% confident that in the future we will be able to um, like I'll be able to say uh, take these 100 podcasts or take these 200 podcasts and turn them into a book on how to run a dental surgery or t- turn them into a book on um, economic policy of the early 21st century for example and computers <coughs> will have the, uh, the the ability to do that I remember um, this guy who runs a podcast called the Twit Podcast, he calls himself the Chief Twit Leo Laporte I mean on the surface very very sort of friendly sort of bloke, he's got a dark side to him because um, he behaved very badly towards one of his uh, interns and employees. I think eventually committed suicide. Um, but um, anyway, that's not the point. The point is he, uh, being, being a fat, dumb American, goes on holiday a lot, or used to, uh, cruises and stuff like that. And being a technologist, he takes a camera or two or three, and he takes about 5,000 pictures, you know, like... Americans and Japanese tourists are famous, aren't they, for sort of not missing missing the uh, actual location for the ability, the, 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 the opportunity to photograph something rather than actually visit it. And um, he always said, you know, when you get home or even or preferably on the day, go through the thousand photographs you've taken that day and um, delete delete the worst 800, you know keep the best 200 and this one this is a blunderbuss approach to creativity I always thought that that was a dumb idea because the storage costs are negligible and you can eventually you will be able to say to a computer take my 10,000 photos and show me the best 200 and it will be able to do that so you don't have to do that and triage yourself you know so that's my rationale behind keeping it, everything. And the other thing I do with these is that um, on YouTube, for example, I don't um, stream stream direct to YouTube. So these are recorded on my phone, uploaded to my server, edited, and then uploaded to YouTube. And that means if if uh, the YouTube algorithm takes umbrage at my reference to the disease, the disease that should not be named that's getting so many people chucked off of YouTube uh, because they've decided to <clears throat> put, put their own perspective on this health uh, issue and it's not, and, you know, uh, 
alternative perspectives on the on this issue are strongly discouraged by the government and, and all the government controlled media and I consider YouTube and Reddit and Facebook and all that to be government controlled media because they do effectively operate under a monopoly license if you like from the government so they've become a quasi uh, <coughs> public co uh, communication channel that has replaced other forms of government communication and uh, you can certainly see that because if you go on uh, YouTube and, and other other services you'll find the the disease information will be top of the list you know or if you go on Google search and you'll find the first thing that you find in any search is information on the uh, disease avoidance and stuff like that and certainly the NHS dentistry has uh, has been in touch with Google and said they want um, certain uh, information to be at the top of any search for NHS dentists or dentists. So, and that's the sort of power that uh, they cede to the government. So, So everything's uploaded to my server and you know that's duplicated and backed up and everything so so should they just delete the channel which they have done to many many people many people on a whim you know just say like we you know three strikes one two three you're out you're off we've deleted all your you know thousands of hours worth of work sometimes and if you've streamed directly to Google then you, you have no copy of that unless you've downloaded it um, so uh, I, I can, I could always theoretically upload to another streaming service or stream directly from my server or whatever. Right. So that's why uh, that's why I've got a YouTube channel with only four followers or thirty-one followers or something. Um, I don't want ten thousand. I've got an idea of how to get ten thousand, but I don't know whether. I'm I don't, I don't want the public, I don't want to draw attention to myself. Okay, I'm not a narcissist. <laughs> right, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later, okay, bye.